two, negative one meter, negative one. So sigma would be 10 to the eighth, and then one over 1.59, and then this one it would be 10 to the eighth, uh, one over 22, 10 to the sixth, one over 1.5, 10 to the fifth, so on, and then this would be 10 to the negative tenth to 10 to the negative 14, and this would be 10 to the negative 16. So you see the relationship here? This is the highest resistivity, very low conductivity. So this is a really, really good insulator. That means if you don't want, if you want a material that doesn't allow electricity flow, then use quartz, fuse quartz. And uh, this one would be very low conductivity. And then as you go this way, glass is comparatively a little better conductor. The resistivity is lower, but the conductivity is still pretty low. And then as you get to carbon, it's a little, uh, it's a, uh, well, now you get to 10 to the negative 5. So the power of the 10 changes way, way. A big jump from here to here, okay? Then carbon 10 to the negative 5, and then uh, connectivity 10 to the 5. So this would be much, much better conductor than these guys here, of course. Ten, now you're getting connectivity is 10 to the 5th. And then this is a better conductor than this. This is much better conductor than this. And this is the... The, this is the best conductor. So silver is the best conductor of electricity. That's like the conclusion of that. And out of the metals, lead is the poor, poorest conductor out of the metals. Okay. And then as you get to nichrome and carbon, these ones are not as good conductors as that. So you guys see the idea, right? Now, there is something related to this in thermodynamics. If we jump over to page uh, chapter um, let's see, I believe it's going to be 20. It's going to give us the thermal conductivity of a material. Let's look at the... Uh, it's going to be probably page, um, yeah, look at, if you've got the book, the seventh edition, look at page 572. Uh, it's, not, it's now going to be the thermal conductivity of the material. And it's the constant K. They use the constant K, and the units are watts per meter Celsius. And then now, that one, out of the metals, aluminum is, uh, let's see, out of the metals, silver is the highest. Silver is 427, and lead is the lowest. 34.7, and there's no unit, uh, there's no power of 10 there. It's just, that's it, 427. I wonder if we can see a relationship here. Is there any pattern that is happening? Silver 427 allows the flow of heat. So in other words, if something is hot and it's made of silver and I touch it, be careful, burn, okay? Uh, lead, not as much. Of course, you're going to get burned again, but there's an order of uh, about 10 difference of heat conductivity. So is there a pattern here? Well, silver was the best electrical conductor. And look at this. Silver is the best thermal conductor. Nice, huh? <laughs> Lead is the poorest conductor of the metals. Lead is the poorest conductor of the metals in heat. And then they go into non-metals. They give you uh, asbestos, concrete, diamond, glass. So uh, glass is uh, 0.8. And then so it's a uh, couple orders, uh, let's see, about a couple orders of magnitude less than this. But glass is way, way. Electrical conductivity is almost zero, nothing. But heat conductivity still conducts heat. 
um, and then they go into other stuff, um, ice, rubber, water, wood, and so on. But it's very interesting to see here this relationship is very starking, stark uh, relationship, right? Silver, boom, best electrical conductor. Lead, boom, poorest metal conductor, you see? So whatever properties of the atoms that is allowing electrons to flow through is the same kind of property that's allowing heat to flow through, right? So it's the same kind of related. Okay, now let's go back to page uh, chapter uh, 27 again. Now let's talk about the coefficient of resistivity. Remember I said resistivity is given at 20 Celsius. We're going to see that the resistivity rises with temperature. Let's, uh, let's see here for just a second. I wonder if... Um, I wonder if the heat conductivity, I'm not sure if they tell us that. Yeah, for the metals, they give us the heat conductivity at 25 degrees Celsius. The table says at 25 degrees Celsius, right? So the heat conductivity also is temperature dependent, okay? What's gonna happen, what's gonna happen as, the, as I raise the temperature? What's gonna happen to the heat conductivity? Think about what's happening on the molecular level, right? Is it now gonna allow the flow of heat as good? If the molecules are jumping up and down, jumping up and down. Let's see here if there's... I believe if, you, if, you, if the temperature goes up, it should be... Um, I believe it should be, in that case, it should be a better uh, conductor of heat. Because if the temperature goes up, their molecules are moving up and down, and they're able to transmit the, the heat better than... Uh, than if the, if the molecules are cold. So in that case, the heat conductivity K should probably, as uh, temperature rise, the K should rise. I'm not sure if they say that here in the book. I don't see it. Um, I don't see them talking about it. But in the electrical case, if you go back to chapter 27, what happens here? They give us this equation for the resistivity of a material. The resistivity is equal to, there's that equation here. It's weird. The seventh edition doesn't give us the. Oh, there it is. Uh, okay, so the resistivity is equal to. So the resistivity of a material is equal to the resistivity zero. What that means is it's the resistivity at the temperature T zero, okay? So since the, the table gives us the resistivity at 20 Celsius, we can use T zero as a 20, and then the resistivity will be the whatever the table is giving us. And then what it's telling us is that as the temperature rises, the resistivity rises. As T rises, it's a linear relationship, the resistivity rises. So as the T rises,